Hello there, Enduro fans everywhere, and welcome to the 79th edition of the International Six Days of Enduro. Last year, Brazil played host, and this year, the ISDE comes from Poland. Can Finland hold on to the trophy? Can France successfully defend the junior title? The answers will come in this program. Additionally, each day we'll catch up with many past champions and a few lesser known riders. Poland is hosting the ISDE for the fourth time, but for the towns of Kielce and Midziana Gora, the sixth day is a major sporting first. Keeping with tradition, the festivities begin with a parade of nations, and 32 motorcycle federations are represented. The opening ceremonies were held in the presence of the Polish Minister for Sport and the President of the FIM, Francesco Zerbi and the International Federation is celebrating its centenary this year. This is a really special edition, because the six-day event will also mark the FIM's 100-year anniversary. This year, the numbers are tremendous. We began with only six federations. Today, there are 92. And this year's sixth day should be the best of the centenary. The very first ISDE took place in England in 1913, and this year in Poland will mark the 79th edition of the event. As for the circuit, no one could accuse the organizers of taking the risk of being original. Just three loops and six special stages are on the racing menu. The circuit is rather flat without any real climbs, a bit repetitive for both racer and fans alike. A shame, really, because with such lush rolling countryside, the ISDE merited a more enthusiastic program. In Poland, enduro racing is extremely popular. After years at the top end of the sport, Poland has recently been far more discreet on the international scene, and the new generation has been slow to be competitive outside its borders. The one major exception is Bartosz Obluki. Exiled for the past five years in Italy, where he races for the Ufo Corsa Yamaha Belgrada, the lone pole in the WEC has been a revelation this season. Currently second in Enduro 1, Bartosz Obluki is clearly the leader of the Polish contingent. We've been uh, training quite a lot uh, together in the uh, last two months, and uh, it seems like uh, it helped a little bit to the guys. and. Uh, I almost uh, I also um, helped them to set up the bike a little bit and uh, it seems to work, so we see at the end of six days. Many up-and-coming riders would like to follow in the footsteps of a blue and Michel Schuster has been very impressive in the European Championship. He's among the young guns that might be a future star of Polish enduro racing and more generally Eastern European enduro because since the era of Slovakia's Emil Kundalik, success has been slim for East European riders. For this first race, two 125-kilometer laps and some very warm weather. Each day will follow the class standings as well as the nation standings. First on course, the Enduro 1 category for 125cc two-stroke and 250cc four-stroke bikes. We just spoke with Bartosz of Lucky. And wouldn't you know it, the pole entered into the junior class and he won ahead of another junior rider, the Italian Simone Abagoni. Obluki took the lead in the last special stage of the day and won by a mere two and a half seconds. Mr. Two-stroke Paul Edmondson decided to make the switch to a four-stroke. The Briton riding a 250 four-stroke Honda, finishing third in Enduro 1. Pateri Silvan, one of the usual top riders in the category, put in the counter-performance of the day. Sylvan rode a bit under the weather and had a day best forgotten, finishing 16th and conceding more than a minute. A real setback for the Finnish team. In Enduro 2, a duel between two of the very best in Enduro. 
Australia's Stefan Merriman decided to change engine size to better take on his principal rival, Juha Salmanen. In this first battle, Stefan Merriman came out on top. Yeah, we we did it a couple of years ago, and um, I was on the Husky, and now I feel good with the with the Yamaha. I feel very comfortable with the bike now, and um, I'm ready to fight again. Yeah. So we'll see. For Salmanen, a 40-second deficit. It must be said that the KTM wasn't up to its usual standard. The Austrian's bike's brakes locked up in the midst of a special stage, and it had big consequences at the end of the day. You know, three months is long break uh, without any Enduro race. It's quite difficult start. Stefan is making Italian champion race, and, uh, and I've been doing other races, you know, not even close to <laughs> Enduro races. So it's difficult to find that the rhythm, you know, the test and control and test and control. So, but it's, we have plenty of days to time uh, to learn again. <laughs> Just as in the WEC, Enduro 3 groups together the bigger bikes. The 525cc four-strokes are the class preference, but there are also the 300cc two-strokes. And like in the WEC, the stars of the category dominate here in Poland. The Spaniard Ivan Cervantes in the junior class is fourth. David Knight from Great Britain is third, despite a heavy pull and some mechanical problems. Mika Ahola from Finland on a Husqvarna takes second place. A Hola's countryman, Samula Aro, is first with a 15-second margin of victory from a Hola and Knight. Well, the category standings are one thing, but the real competition in the six-day event is the standings by nation. And at the end of the first day, we can see already which countries are coming to the fore. On paper, defending champions Finland is the team to beat. This Scandinavian squad has a deep and talented lineup. The trio of Aro, Ahola, and Salmanen easily make up for the slower times of the team's second tier riders, Laksanen and Sarankowski. Finland is leading the sixth day to the surprise of no one. That's the first day, and I think uh, when uh, tomorrow it will be better for Finns. Uh, there is coming more pumps and everything, in, uh, in especially in those sandy testes, and there I think. Uh, Normally, normally Finns are, are very strong. Behind the Finns, Sweden and Italy and France still cultivate an inferiority complex. And since 2001 and a French victory in the ISDE, these nations have been limited to the lower places. Today, only Italy seems to be a serious rival, at just 38 seconds behind. The squadra Azzurra is relying on experience with riders like Roberto Bazzuri, Mario Rinaldi and Gio Sala, all of whom are in their 30s. With Mario, we are the oldest team. It's good because we can advise the younger guys, and I, for one, think that a team like us, that's really important. A glance at the trophy standings. While Finland has a slim lead from Italy, there's already some daylight to the other nations. France is third, Sweden is fourth, and Great Britain lies fifth. For two years, France has dominated the junior class with two consecutive titles. Despite the presence of Nicolas Depawar, the recently crowned European champion, the start for the French team has been somewhat disappointing, and they are currently seventh. For the under-23 Italian team, all is well. It must be noted that the presence of an international class rider like Simone Albergoni and his factory Honda HM is reassuring. Italy currently leads second place Spain by six seconds. The Bartosz of Lucky led Polish team is third, followed by Finland and Germany. They are one of the fan favorite teams of the six day event. Awarded the Fair Play Trophy in 2003, Mexico are a welcome addition to the ISDE. Very little funding and a bare bones team, but a family like atmosphere with the desire of each member to take part in this motorcycle racing celebration. Uh, la decisión de venir es que llevamos viniendo ya casi 
We've been coming to the sixth day for 22 years. To be here is important for Mexico. It's a reflection of what's going on at the world level. For Homero, who races in the World Championship, he allows our team to compete with the best. Homero Diaz and his brother Sergio are the top riders in Mexican enduro racing, a series that is still in the shadow of North American motocross. In Mexico, enduro racing is still rather unknown. Yeah, there's a lot of interest there for sure, but it's like a family of riders and their close friends. If I go to a restaurant, people don't turn their heads and say, look, that's Homero Diaz. No, nadie conoce, es más bien muy familiar. Homero and I look so much alike that sometimes they get us confused. Homero believes in me and encourages me. It looks like the three years in the World Championship is starting to pay off. Mexico is in the running for a top 10 result, but more importantly, they are here for a good time. Day two of the competition. On the program, holes, ruts, and dust. In these types of conditions, the French team is not a contender. Fabien Planet is seventh, and Marc Germain is 11th. The French team loses a tremendous amount of ground. <laughs> I really had a hard time to find the pace. I was too conservative in the specials. In the last one, I was blocked and I fell while trying to pass. This season, the 254 strokes have clearly been the best bikes in the division. And the first of the 125 two strokes came fourth, ridden by KTM and Portuguese rider Helder Rodriguez, one of the mainstays of the WEG, and entered here in the trophy competition. The ruts and dust were no problem for Simone Albergoni. The Italian rider was the only man able to beat a Blucchi. Albergoni took first, followed by a Blucchi, and veteran Paul Edmondson took third in Enduro 1. Here we see something that doesn't happen too often. Juha Salmanen lost in a pack of back markers. The Finnish champion was the major loser on day two due to a broken motor. A 55 minute penalty, time lost for repairs, five more and he was disqualified to the great delight of his rivals. Fortunately for his team, the ISDE rules tolerate one poor result per day, which they call the Joker. Juha Salmanen is Finland's Joker on Tuesday. He's late, but smiling. <laughs> yeah, it was almost uh, one hour longer than, than uh, anybody else. So it was long then, hard day, yes. With Salmon and gone, the track is wide open for Stefan Merriman. The Australian star and his Yamaha 450 dominate Enduro 2. Another Finn, Valtteri Salonen, was a major surprise coming second to Merriman. Salonen ahead of Villanova in third and Pochamo in fourth. Anders Eriksson followed Salmanen in the category of having a bad day. With a broken clutch came a huge penalty. According to the rules, Anders had to do the repairs himself, and thus is Sweden's joker of the day, a role not easy to take on. <laughs> not so easy, but this is a team event and you have to uh, do everything for the team. Uh, so it was never in my mind that uh, give up or anything. Just keep on going, try to fix the bike, try to find out what is the problem. And I think we uh, solved it and we can push again for tomorrow. In the Enduro 3 standings, Marco Tarkula, the Finnish junior rider, is fifth. Another junior class competitor, Ivan Cervantes, is fourth, as we see here. Husqvarna rider Mika Ahola is third, while quick and consistent riding from David Knight puts the rider from the Isle of Man into second position. And it 
It's Finland's Samulo Aro who leads after taking his second consecutive win, as well as leading the overall standings. In the nation's standings, Italy was the strongest side on day two. In Enduro 1, former motocross rider Alessandro Bellametti is riding in top form. And factory Husqvarna rider Roberto Bazzuri helped Italy cut 17 seconds off Finland's lead. Italy is presently second, but the top step of the podium isn't too far away. It's clear that Finland had a problem. It's advantageous because for us they are the most aggressive team. It is good for Italy, but we must not forget about France, who are a traditional rival along with Italy. It has the makings of a good fight. Too bad for France that not everyone rode like Fabien Planet because there was room for a top result on the second day. The French are still third but did concede a minute to their Italian counterparts. In the standings behind Finland it is Italy and France followed by Sweden in fourth and Great Britain in fifth. There is a new leader in the junior class. Spain, led by Cervantes and Villanova, lead the under-23 division. Italy is relegated to second place. But it's a tight race because Finland, who is currently third, is less than a minute behind Spain and Italy. Poland and Germany are a distant fourth and fifth. As is always the case, once they arrive in Europe, they are hard not to miss. The Stars and Stripes flies everywhere it can. The United States is here at the ISDE to compete. Well, last year we got seventh place. We were hoping to at least it, 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 it match the uh, the effort of last year. Last year we had, uh, you know, quite a few of the top American riders. The American riders that we have this year are uh, more primarily um, you know, little lower level guys, but guys who wanted to be here, so their heart brings them here. The bikes crossed the Atlantic in wooden crates. In the inside, they slid these amusing tiny balls, especially made in the USA. Enduro racing in the States is like rodeo in Europe, an unknown sport. But more adept to Grand National Cross Country, the American riders are here to learn as much as they can. A little bit tired after two days. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> the trail's really good. Um, got really tight, really technical rocks and stuff. Um, all the special tests are good. They're all a little different. They got a real sandy one. Then they got a total grass track one, and then they got one that's kind of in between. So uh, yeah, so far, I'm really, really enjoying myself and really having a good time out here. And there is one rider who is having a particularly good outing in the US side. Kurt Caselli is currently in fifth position in Enduro 2. He may have what it takes to compete with the best at the world level, and why not in the few years to come? Well, rain was expected, and sure enough, it has shown up here at Kielce. The mechanics will no longer have to change the air filters to the tune of five times per day, as the dust is no longer a concern. The riders set off on a new circuit and another 130-kilometer loop. Here, on one of the few climbs on the course, Simone Albergoni takes his second win in Enduro 1. Bartosz Oblucki came second. The Polish rider lost out for first by a mere four seconds and still remains second overall in the class. While England's Paul Edmondson held on to third position. The special stage run on the wet grass in the morning was the occasion for some surprises. This was the case with Michel Schuster. Poland's hopeful for the future has impressed in the ISDE, and he finished fourth. French rider Raphael André showed his prowess, finishing a fine seventh. Just behind in eighth place was former Dutch cross superstar Pedro Tractor. The 1993 125 world champion is an enduro convert. Ewa Salmonen is simply impressive. 
After the mechanical miseries from the day before, the factory KTM rider did the undoable in beating Stefan Merriman by 11 seconds to take the overall win for the day. Another strong showing for Finland was put in by Tommy Piltola. This Finn, who finished fourth on the day, isn't well known by the public, but the team managers and specifically Kari Tianen already have an eye on young Peltola. Sebastian Guillaume put in an encouraging fifth place run. Once the weather conditions became severe, the French method came to the fore. In Enduro 3, we hadn't seen Italian Alessandro Zani riding at this level for some time. Whereas he has struggled in the WEC, the factory Honda HM man is having a great six-day event, finishing third in Enduro 3. Yeah, today went very, very well. I am in third place, which isn't too bad. I stayed near Arrow and the 500 cc's. I'm pleased not to have had any problems in any of the specials. I didn't take any risks that could hurt the team. Ci poteva anche far meglio, però rischiare anche per la squadra e tutto non mi sembrava il caso. On this third day of racing, we thought for a moment that David Knight could take top honors. But once again, Samulo Arrow had the last word, Arrow capturing his third win by six seconds. Seeing the state of Pateri Silvan's hands, even the Finnish winning machine is starting to suffer. The Flying Finns are now owners of a 90-second lead from Italy in the overall. France sits comfortably in third, still followed by Sweden and Great Britain. One thing is for sure in the junior class, France will not win for the third year in a row. Two riders were forced to retire. Jordan Covalli dislocated his shoulder, while the Kawasaki of Johan Pelletere had an engine failure. Jordan s'est fait mal en liaison hier. Yesterday, Jordan hurt himself in the liaison. Today, he tried to rejoin the race, but it was too difficult. Apparently, Jordan's bike took a lot of dust, and it's impossible to start. We've lost two junior riders, and the team is out. In the junior division standings, Italy moves ahead of Spain into the top spot with a 30-second margin, but it's far from over. This third day of the ISDE was marred by two terrible incidents. Firstly, a road accident involving Dutch rider Jose Pruin. Pruin's motorbike hit a car in traffic. Pruin and the two Polish passengers in the vehicle were sadly killed in the accident. Truly, another terrible accident hit the ISDE fraternity. German rider Sven Enderlein succumbed to injuries when he hit a tree branch in a liaison section. The 26-year-old Enderlein had recently won the German Enduro Championship.
day four of the event is now a day of mourning. After the events of the day before, the entire paddock can only think of the victims and their families. A minute of silence and a black armband to show support. The exit of the Parc Fermé already proves to be decisive for Simone Albergoni in Enduro 1. His Honda will not fire up due to a compression problem and the Italian junior class rider is forced to retire. With Albergoni gone, it's clear sailing for Bartos Oblucchi, now the odds-on favourite in Enduro 1. But Oblucchi can't rest on his laurels because behind the local hero will have to face the challenge from the leader of the French team who is to have one of his best days of the event. Marc Germain matches Oblucchi's times all day long, but the Polish star does win the day by a mere 3.67 seconds from the Frenchman. Elsewhere, it is a shame that the rest of the French squad in the trophy class couldn't find the pace of leader Germain. Raphael André managed just 27th place. A lucky first, Germain second, and the surprise of this ISDE, Poland's Michel Schuster third, giving the Yamaha 250cc four-stroke a sweep of today's Enduro 1 podium. Returning to Enduro 2 and the 450 Yamaha, Stefan Merriman destroyed the field, winning by more than three minutes. The Australian once again got the better of Dua Salmanen. So fast was the Aussie that he won the overall for the day by 3.61 seconds. And of course, he had a bit of fun to boot. Yeah, it's very nice today. No dust and, uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice ride today. At uh, this stage of the race, what's the most uh, important to do? Um, oh, is keep concentration because as many hours we've been driving the bike and uh, you have to keep thinking all the time. It's easy to become relaxed. For his part, Salmanen is pleased to race for his team. Finland still leads the trophy standings. Out of contention for individual honours after his two problems, he's way down the general standings in 141st place. After Merriman and Salmanen, it was Arno Villanova who finished 30 seconds behind the Finn. The man from Catalonia and the Spanish junior team grabbing third place. In Enduro 2, the junior Finns were well represented with Tommy Peltola taking fourth and Valtteri Salonen finishing eighth. He's keen to pick up pointers from a champion like Dua Salmanen. Uh, about the suspension because I have a little problems with the rear and front. Front is too hard and my arms it's very, very, very painful and I don't know, I hope it works. <laughs> On paper, the Belgian team looks strong, but races aren't held on paper, are they? One must remember that it was a Belgian rider, Stefan Everts, who won the ISDE when it was held in Brazil. Thierry Klutz had the good fortune of debuting in motocross alongside Everts, but hasn't quite matched the results of the Belgian star. Klutz finished the day 11th, the Belgian squad lies 13th. It's dur, hein? It's hard because it's tiring. There isn't anything too difficult, but it is tiring in the woods. There are many routes that are hard to spot and a lot of stones. They're also hard to see, but that's what we're here for. He too is here to race for the win. David Knight finally got the better of Samuelo Arrow on day four. The Briton and future factory KTM rider took the honors in Enduro 3. On Thursday, Samuelo Arrow finished second, seven seconds from Knight. Ivan Cervantes well represented the Spanish junior clan in third, a solid fourth for Sweden's Bjorni Carlsen aboard the Husaberg. After the fourth day of competition, the trophy competition is beginning to lose some of its luster. Finland has a two-minute lead from Italy, while France is in third behind the Finns. Sweden remained fourth. The yellow and blue are counting on the experience of their riders who are regulars in the WEC. 
Among them is Anders Eriksson, seven-time world champion. But there's also Bjorni Carlsen, Anders Torreson, and TM rider Richard Larsson. An aging generation, but still as competitive as ever. Trailing Sweden is Great Britain in fifth, and Australia in sixth. Nothing has really changed in the trophy standings. It's story time with the juniors as each day is a brand new one. The Italian team has built up an insurmountable lead in the junior class. But Andrea Bocconi took a 17-minute penalty after having a mechanical problem. And to make matters worse was the retirement of Simone Albergoni, comforted ah, by Bartos of Lucci. Yeah, I'm disappointed. I had the same problem detto, twice. It's perplexing. I'll have to make up for it at the Worlds. In questa gara internazionale, peccato. Ripeto, ci rifaremo mondiale. Ivan Cervantes' teammates took the fight to their adversaries. Spain has a small advantage in the junior class from Finland and their two stars, Tarkla and Peltola. The Abluki led Polish team is third, followed by Australia and Great Britain. Nothing is sure when you go racing, especially when you come from Canada. Just one objective for the Canadian squad bring the bike home in one piece. In the night clan, enduro racing is a family affair. While David has become a major fixture at the world level these past two years, it was Juan, his older brother, who introduced him to world competition. The two brothers from the Isle of Man are close, but let them tell us about their brothers in their own special way. Who began on Duro first? Uh, June. Um, I did. Now who is the best rider? Uh, me, uh, David. In life, what is your main quality? Um, um, my family probably. None, I don't think. What is his best quality? Uh, his bikes. Um, that's a tough one. <laughs> what is your main default? Um, too lazy. I've got a few faults, I think, but I won't mention them. What is his main default? Um, drinking probably. Too keen. If I say religion? Yeah. Uh, only weddings. Yeah, okay. Music. Um, country and western. Yeah, good. And duo. Uh, hard, muddy, old type. Yeah, good. Isle of Man. Isle of Man, best place in the world. The best. Diet. Sorry. Spaden. Eating. Eating. Um, steak and chips. Um, yeah, chips. Sex. Yeah, lots. Spot on. <laughs> When you were young, who did the most bad things? Um, uh, David. Probably him beating me up all the time. What was it? Uh, for anything that he shouldn't do. Uh, fighting. Who is the stronger man? Uh, I'm stronger than him. Uh, me, probably, because he eats too many pies. Who is the clever man? Me. Uh, him. When have you been the most proud of your brother? Um, never. Um, <coughs> probably... When he got married. When have you been the most proud of you? Uh, never really. Never. When I win the world championship. Which advice would you give him for the rest of the life? Uh, be happy. Uh, just keep going while he can, really. This fifth day of racing will see the riders set off on a hybrid loop, a mix of tracks from the previous days. Bartos of Lucky and Marc Germain are back at it. Opposing rider styles from the two men, heavy cornering on the pole. While the Frenchman takes on the corners nice and flat. And it was the Polish style that won out. Of Lucky beating Germain by 3.15 seconds. Yeah, on the day uh, to Mark Germain, and it, uh, I crashed first time in this race, but it was a little crash and I win again, so very good day. A 
fine day of riding as well for Alessandro Bellametti. The former motocross rider, third here, was right at home on this particular circuit. He was also the first of the two straight riders in Enduro 1. And Finland's Pateri Silvan recovered from being a bit under the weather and rode strong on his way to the fourth best time, ahead of Holland's Pedro Tractor. France's Fabian Flané, despite being quite young, proved to be very consistent and did well to take sixth place. His performance did the French team a world of good. During this six-day event, Paul Edmondson didn't think he would have to call upon his jogging skills, and yet the Englishman was forced to push his Honda four-stroke for several kilometers to reach the Parc Ferme. The following morning, he'd have just 10 minutes of authorized time to complete the repairs. Edmondson took three minutes in penalty time and is now 68. Paul, please, what, what happened today? Just a small problem with the bike. Um, so not sure exactly what the problem is, but just trying to fix it at the moment. Paul Edmondson will spend a long night thinking about the work to be done. Another star of the series that is having a tough time, this time in Enduro 2, is Alessandro Bottori. The former rugby player hit a tree stump, breaking a toe and seriously injuring his hand. The solid combatant is ready to cope with his new condition as soon as someone can fit him with a boot, size 52, for his swollen foot. Then he'll be back at it. Fortunately, the ISDE features a majority of the top riders, most notably Stefan Merriman and Dua Salmanen. First, we'll take a closer look at the Australian. Merriman is once again the man of the day. The diminutive Aussie takes the class and the overall win. Here in Poland, for Merriman, it is much like a vacation. Yeah, it's been quite a long day. As as all days, it's been pretty long and uh, a little bit dusty today because haven't had enough rain and uh, w going over the same tracks as before. Um, but in the special tests, I managed to push hard and and win today. So I'm very happy about that. Um, they were very difficult tests. Typical sort of Scandinavian soft, sandy, difficult conditions for me because I'm used to the hard pack of Italy. But um, no, I'm really happy. Mr. Salmoner must be slightly annoyed at being regularly beaten during the six-day event by his arch rival. The Finn comes second best by six seconds to Merriman. Behind the two lead riders is junior class competitor Arno Villanova from Spain, while Kurt Caselli from the US squad winds up fourth ahead of Frenchman Sebastian Guillaume on his 250 Gas Gas. He was quite artistic in the sand section. Many things took place on day five, even in the liaison sections. Now it's time to hear from Swedish rider Larry Gustafsson. There was a small tree bent over the track. I saw three guys, uh, adults, three men. Uh, when I came there, I took the left one. I wondered why the tree was bent down, so I just leaned under it. And uh, when I leaned under it and almost stopped the bike, someone just uh, hit me with something over the right elbow. Uh, I felt I was hurt, uh, but I put the clutch out and got away. And then I see to the right, someone is uh, trying to grab me. Uh, but I leaned to the left and go away. So. The result, a broken arm, and as many as 12 competition bikes were stolen. In Enduro 3, it's the same story that has been playing out since day one. The Swedes are a bit off the pace, and as Ericsson can do better than sixth, while Bjorni Carlsen comes in fifth best. There is also Marco Tarkala. The Finnish junior rider took fourth. His results in this year's WEC haven't gone unnoticed, and Tarkler will be moving from the Husaberg outfit to join the mighty KTM next season. David Knight was third, while Spain's Ivan Cervantes continued his strong form with a second place. Cervantes has come to Poland with his huge four-stroke to take on the ISDE, and his results have shown a tremendous amount of seriousness for the man from Catalonia.
As for first place, same old story. Finland Samulo Arrow was once again unbeatable. His planned move to Enduro 2 for next season must have most of the riders of the average displacement category just a little bit worried. Yes, it must be said, Finland won again in the trophy class and we can say without getting too far ahead of ourselves that they already have a hand on the cup. What is more surprising is the strong comeback put in by France in this next to last day of competition. Second on this day and third overall, but with one eye on Italy just ahead of them. Trailing Finland by a minute and 34, they still have reason to hope, and of course anything can still happen. Job well done from the Australian side, fixed on six since the start, the Aussies have been surprising. They've been running hard and posting competitive times. And the helpful coaching from star rider Stefan Merriman doesn't go amiss. Yeah, I went back in, um, in August when we had a small break here and tried to get the guys motivated a little bit more um, because it's such a big trip to come over here. And, uh, yeah, no, they're all, they're all going good and all the riders still still in, so um, that's a good thing. Finland, Italy, France, Sweden and Great Britain. Nothing has changed since the first day. The hierarchy seems to have been well respected. <laughs> On day five, the Spanish junior squad stretched their lead over Finland to 1 minute 48. The Spaniards are enjoying their second day in the lead, knowing that there is only one last day of competition to get through. This lot of riders go by the colourful name of the Sheep Skull Riders. These boys are known for their out-of-the-ordinary riding exploits. You could say that they are the jackass crowd of the world of enduro. They come from the Isle of Man and have followed the ISDE since 1995, providing the light-heartedness. We are the uh, Isle of Man Sheep Skull Enduro Riders. This is my friend Bert, and this is my friend Al Cuentos. <laughs> Um, yes, but um, <laughs> sorry, it's um, very difficult here for this interview, but we'll, we'll try our best to give you all the information you need. We like, uh, you can in Poland, we like kielbasa with two. Oh, it's raining again, sorry. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> we love men. <laughs> It's difficult to define these crazy guys as perhaps we pay too much attention to them as they kid first with our cameraman, then an Italian TV journalist. But we tip our hat to their fun-filled spirit and their good-hearted demeanour. The Sheep Skull Riders are here and they're out to amuse people. Cast your mind back to last night and Paul Edmondson ended the day by pushing his motorbike. This morning he has 10 minutes to change the valves and only he is allowed to work on the bike. The, the next time that your bike mechanic charges you for the many hours needed to change valves, you can tell him the story of Paul Edmondson on the sixth day of the ISDE. The Englishman got away lightly with only a 10 second penalty and all is well as he is able to fire up his machine. The six-day epilogue begins as always at the end of the liaison section and a motocross final with a group start. Except that at Kielce certain riders have decided to rebel. After the Enduro 1 round was done the competitors in Enduro 2 didn't want to take up the start. They complained that the track wasn't sufficiently watered down and that there was too much dust. They also complained that race marshals were not up to standard and that the circuit was dangerously close to the spectators. With the lack of a response from the organisers, a large part of their number went on strike. Yeah, it is a bit dangerous, but they did put water down, and yeah, I think they'll be okay. Anyway, we're used to riding one behind another. In a group, it's different, though. 
I personally respect their opinions, and in any case, I won't be riding by myself, and I'm not dueling with Nicola. If the strikers are within their rights, there are some riders who are also within their rights who want to carry on. If some were quickly discouraged by the calls of their fellow competitors, others were encouraged, and that's the case of Juan Knight. The following is in fact too sad to show you. But we can tell you that Juan Knight was assaulted by the Spanish juniors who didn't want any of the positions to change. And this edition of the ISDE would finish in total confusion. This type of situation also occurred four years ago in Granada. And like in Spain, the jury decided to freeze the standings from the day before on day five. In this imbroglio, Finland's win in the trophy race went practically unnoticed. And yet the world's best enduro nation won its sixth ISDE and third on the trot. New scenes of jubilation for Silvan, Salmanen, Sarakowski, Arrow, Larksnen and Ahola. Yeah, tonight I'm, I'm very happy. This was a uh, nice victory for Team Finland. Finland and uh, I'm very happy. So today I was, I was a little bit disappointed that we couldn't have the party in the, in the final motocross place, but uh, still uh, now in the prize game <laughs> ceremony, it, it feels good and uh, we, we won the world championship uh, just with the fair riding, so it's, it's good. The Tullio Pellegrinelli-led Italian team finished second, ahead of France in third, as was the case last year. Sweden and Great Britain round out the top five. In the junior class, the title was handed to Finland on a silver plate. After taking into account the events that occurred in the afternoon, the jury decided to disqualify Anua Villanova, costing the Spanish team the title. So Finland take gold, followed by Poland and Australia. And in the individual standings, Bartosz Obluki won in Enduro 1, Stefan Merriman won in Enduro 2 and overall, and Samulo Aro took...